All right, I'm on the phone, as we are every Monday, with the MDI head football coach, Mark Shields, and coach, uh, and a very impressive, um, uh, I guess a route is what we want to call it, 62-6 over Herman on Friday night, and uh, MDI just dominated right from the get-go. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, You know, opening kickoff, we're kicking off to them, and sure enough, you know, Isaiah Keene doesn't get his best foot on the ball and a thing spinning in the middle of the field. And, I mean, we're pretty fast. So our kickoff team, you know, beats Herman to the ball. Three plays later, we're in the end zone, and we got the two-point conversion. And you look at the clock, and it's whatever. You know, a couple minutes off the clock, we're up 8 nothing. And, you know, I've been on the other end of games like that, and it seems like when things fall apart for your team, it just happens so quickly. You're like, how the heck could a team score, you know, three touchdowns in a couple of minutes? But it just sort of happens that way, you know. And, you know, we had some long runs early on. And, and then they had some turnovers. And, you know, Chris Farnsworth has an interception for a touchdown. Graham Good has, you know, a fumble recovery, runs it back for a touchdown. And, you know, next thing you know, you look at the scoreboard and go, oh, my gosh, you know, how can we stop this? And so, you know, I, I feel for Herman and – You know, I don't like putting 62 points on the scoreboard on any team because I've been on the other end of that and it does not feel good. But with that being said, you know, we did gear down in the second quarter. We had our twos in there from the, you know, pretty much, I don't know, halfway through the second quarter all the way through the rest of the game. And, you know, and the thing is you can't tell those kids not to play hard. I mean, that's somebody's going to get hurt and, and we're still trying to get better as a football team. And, you know, those younger kids getting that experience is great for them and, you know, it helps them, especially for us later in the year. Our, we don't have great numbers this year on the team. And, you know, some of those JV guys are probably going to step on the field, you know, for the varsity team. So getting them better is important. So it's not something we're accustomed to, uh, having a score like that. And um, But, you know, I, I felt like the kids were very respectful throughout the whole game. And, you know, I, I talked to the Herman coach after the game and, you know, he was totally fine. He he understood, and he was happy that we did gear it down as quickly as we did. So, um, yeah, it, it's a good win. Any win is a good win on the road, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue to, to keep it going this week. I don't know whether the special teams heard your grading of them last week, but uh, I, and we'll ask in a couple minutes about grading the, the, the teams, but – uh, I mean, certainly you you got a punt return for a uh, a touchdown by Drew Rich, a, a 46-yarder, I think, return. And all the extra points were good, both on, uh, when he kicked them and um, uh, when you ran for two. So, I mean, it's, from a special teams point, uh, you've got to be, just be thrilled with, with the way the Trojans uh, performed. Yeah, I'd say overall, I mean, you've been covering this since 2006. I'd say that's probably the best performance in a game that we've had you know as far as consistency in our special teams and you know like you said right across the board from kickoffs to punt returns to to point after attempts and you know and stopping their their point after attempt they scored and we you know defensively we held them on the two-point conversion so yeah i mean we were real pleased and the reality is the farther you go into the season and if you you know get yourself into the playoffs you're going to need all those extra points, you know, and we right. both know that special teams also is a big-time momentum changer. It's a game changer, and, you know, when big plays happen on special teams, you know, it really does lift your squad, you know. So, yeah, I was I was real happy. The kids have worked real hard uh, on special teams, and, uh, you know, they're taking a lot of pride in that, and, and that's going to only help us down the road. All right, so let's let's grade the teams first of all. I, I, give me a grade for the for the special teams after, uh, well, for Friday night. For Friday night, we'd have to give them an A. I mean, they were they were lights out. I mean, to get that opening kickoff, you know, we knew going in that Herman runs a funky offense that they can take some major time off the clock, and you know, to kick the ball, knowing you're going to get the ball at the beginning of the second half, and sure enough, you get on it and you start the the game, you know, the first half with the ball and the second half with the ball, that's huge. So, yeah, those guys played really well, as we said. Um, offensively, I was real happy um, with, obviously, with our starters. I mean, those guys came out and they took care of business. Um, 
I honestly wanted to try to throw the ball more. We didn't throw one pass all night long because I, I don't think it's respectful when you get up on a team like that to start throwing the ball around the field. I, you know, I think you just try to run the ball and take time off the clock right. and, and try to get out of there. So, you know, offensively, I, I thought we had it clicking. And um, you, but you, more important, you came out and you weren't in the tee. I mean, you were. It, it looked like you were going to throw. Yeah, um, and that was scheme wise. I mean, because you've been you know, following us the last few weeks. You know, this year we, we have put in, we call it our flex offense, or more of a spread look, and we knew that they were a team that were, they were going to pack it in defensively. I mean, at times they had nine guys in the box against some other teams. So we decided that our flex look was going to be our best option against them to try to spread them out, and, and obviously that was our best option. And, you know, we, we ran some T plays with the with our starters, but, mostly on the two-point conversions, but overall we're pretty much in the flex. And it's just nice to know that, you know, we can run that offense as well. And that was really a goal for ours coming into this week, that we want to feel more confident and comfortable running that flex offense in a football game. We ran it probably about 40% against Foxcroft. But since then, against our last two opponents, Belfast and Winslow, we hadn't run a lot of it. So we wanted to get that flex in and, and see how it looked. And, and the kids, I, I think they ran that really well. So that was that was really important. So I, I would say, you know, offensively for that night, um, and that's also talking about my, my twos, I thought those guys looked really good uh, snapping down into their stances, getting off the ball, faking. I thought those guys did a good job. So I, I'd have to say we're, you know, for the night, I'd say, have to say a, a low A and and then defensively, let I me probably, just let me just interrupt you there. I, roughly about 225 yards on the ground, and I think more importantly, MDI has continued the. Um, I don't want to say the tradition, but it would be a nice if you could build upon the tradition. But uh, you're scoring on your first uh, possession again. Yep. Uh, once again, we talked about that last week. How big that is to get out of the gates early, and uh, you know have that confidence to move down the field and, and get in the end zone and get ahead of our opponent, you know, right from the start. I, I think that's huge, and, you know, I'm hoping that's something that we can continue to do. And, you know, I'd say defensively, you know, I thought the kids played really well. We, we had a couple breakdowns. They credit to Herman. They, they got down a couple of scores, but they did not quit. They kept battling, and they came out on their second or third drive um, and ended up, you know, moving right down the field. It was right. a long drive. They had a couple of nice long runs. Uh, we took some real bad angles to the running back. I think uh, some of our guys didn't realize number nine for them, how fast he was. And uh, his name, uh, last name Morse, um, you know, he's a good back. So uh, we took some, some bad angles, and sure enough, he got around the end, and he's scoring touchdowns. So, you know, that's something we need, obviously, to clean up. There's, there's always something to get better at, and when you really break down film, you know, you start looking at the game within the game. I mean, forgetting about the touchdowns and the scoreboard and all that sort of stuff. You start looking at, you know, things up front and faking and block. You know, there's, there's so much involved in, in what we do that, um, you know, there's always room for improvement. But as far as that night particularly, I would say, once again, we'd be somewhere in the A range. All right. So a great, certainly a, a great night. So uh, how did you come out of there health-wise? Yeah, we, we did pretty well. Um, I have one guy, Ezra Johnson. He's a starter on defense. A great kid, Swans Island kid. He's a junior. Uh, he's never played football before, and he, we were so impressed with him over the summer workouts and then preseason that he ended up starting right from day one uh, down in Foxcroft, and he hasn't lost his job since because he worked so hard. And um, It was just a weird play. Uh, he was tackling one of Herman's running backs, and he was kind of going backwards. And as he went backward, his foot kind of got caught, and he rolled back um, and really, uh, you know, squeezed his knee a little bit. I wouldn't say twisted it, but he kind of folded it up under him. And so that's, uh, you know, we ended up taking him out of the game. And I saw him this morning. I just had him in class, and uh, he's walking on it. He looks pretty good. I don't honestly know if he'll play this week. Uh, he had a wrap on it, and we're going to be real smart about how we approach this. We don't want to get him out there too soon. And and then him be out for two or three more weeks. So right. we want to, uh, you know, we'll have the trainer, Dan Vibert keep an eye on him. And, uh, you know, if he's eligible to play, if Dan deems that he's healthy, then he'll play. But if not, we'll uh, rest him this week against John Baptist. All right, so what are you going to work on in practice this week? 
Yeah, you know, once again, I don't think it's time to start adding a bunch of stuff. Like we said last week, here we are now moving into week five in the regular season. You know, I think, once again, you, you continue to simplify and get better at what you're doing. Um, you know, adding new stuff at this point is just going to confuse kids. And, and honestly, for us, we probably have the – when I'm thinking – adding stuff more offensively than defensively or special teams, but we probably have more offense in this year than we've ever had since I've been head coach. And I was a little wary about that, honestly, early on because it's just more stuff for our kids to learn. And, and you got to make sure not only do they know what they're doing, but they do it properly. And you, you do have time to rep that every day in practice. And, you know, so I think once again, we go back to the tape and start looking at what's working, what's not, um, and simplify even more and, and, you know, as you move forward, really look at the plays that are going to work for you. And so we'll continue to do that. And, you know, I thought our, our pass defense was a little better. I mean, Herman doesn't throw the ball a lot. They, they want to run the ball. And, you know, obviously we had a pick six by Chris Farnsworth. I was really happy for him. And now we're facing a team, John Baps, that they run a spread offense. The next, I think, three teams we face will run spread offenses, shotgun, they got some fast kids running around the backfield, and the kid, their quarterback throws the ball real well. They have some real athletic receivers. So, you know, for us, it's like changing gears from a, a Herman team who wants to run and, you know, kind of grind it out on you to a team now that, I mean, Baps, they still want to run the ball, but they have the capability of throwing it, and they'll put kids in space to do that. So I think for us, it's a big week uh, defensively. Okay. What do you want to say to, to, to all the fans? Yeah, uh, I thought we had a great crowd out uh, up there at Herman, and thank you for that support. And, you know, I'm hoping we have a big crowd. At, looking at the weather forecast, I think the, it's going to be a little breezy, they're saying, but I think the weather's going to be decent. It's feeling more like football weather, and uh, we're hoping we have a big crowd come out for John Bass Friday night. All right, Coach, have a good week. We'll talk to you on Thursday. All right, Chris, thank you. All right, Chris, thank you.